Hi, uh, let's have a little look at this experiment here. This is quite an interesting use of a cathode ray tube uh, to look at the relationship between the velocity of an electron and the charge and mass ratio. Uh, this is normally done uh, with an experiment I already looked at previously using an educational CRT like this one, but this one is using an ordinary oscilloscope CRT. The one here is actually, I think this is what they've got in mind, a very small uh, oscilloscope uh, tube. Uh, the idea is that you're using a solenoid around the outside to produce a, a field align in, in line with the electron beam. And using your uh, Y plates to produce a straight line, you can cause this the electron beam to curve or spiral around the field to reduce it to a spot. Uh, and I'll not go into the maths of it, but I want to try and do this with an oscilloscope CRT. So firstly, if we think about uh, a standard oscilloscope cathode ray tube, uh, we have our electron gun here and we have plates. So deflection in these are done by electrostatic deflection, X and Y plates. Uh, whereas a normal television CRT's deflection is done by coils placed for either X and Y directions at the side of the, or the outside of the neck of the tube. You can do with either, and in this case, uh, with an oscilloscope, they use electrostatic plates. Uh, if we look at the electron gun here, at one, you can see there are anodes here, the focusing anode, and our Y plates at the end, and X plates in the middle at 90 degrees to one another. But in this case, what we're trying to do is we're actually going to use this style of CRT uh, using just the Y plate with electrostatic deflection and put it inside this solenoid style coil uh, around here. So the, the field is at right angles to the normal deflection. So the deflection would normally be there, but we're rotating the coil this way so that the field is parallel to the beam. So we have in this setup, we have our CRT inside this large solenoid coil around it. So the screen is at this, this end here. And this is the uh, connections to the electron gun at the back here. So we've connected it up such that I can power the heaters and appropriate voltages on the anodes. I can also supply a current, a DC current into this coil around the tube itself. I have an, another power supply feeding in here to the Y plates which will give an AC signal for deflection on the Y plates. Now this is set uh, just driven from a transformer from the mains, so that's 50 Hertz. The frequency is not important in this case. So this is as looking into the the pipe basically with the coil around it on the outside and we have the oscilloscope uh, CRT screen in front of us. So I apply the voltage to the heaters and then I apply a voltage onto the anodes and plates and we get a spot in the centre of the screen. I've already focused that and I can vary the voltage on that uh, the anodes so that we can have basically change the, the voltage which changes the acceleration of the electrons along the CRT. Okay, next uh, I can apply a voltage to the Y plates uh, to deflect the, the beam. I choose, I choose the Y plates because of the very last electrode on the gun uh, therefore anything we do from the, to the beam uh, after that point is not influenced by anything other than the coil on the outside here. So we can reduce it down to very small or we take the deflection up to basically the, the full, full width of the screen. I can now apply a voltage to the, the coil. I'll use, initially I'll use a variable supply for that. So I connect that now we have a DC voltage across the coil and as I increase that voltage we're now causing the beam to t twist round. Now interestingly enough some oscilloscopes use a coil to allow you to adjust 
the horizontal positions of the, 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 the normal time-based scan using something like this. But we're going to take the current up a lot higher and not only does it twist the beam but the beam is therefore is reduced in its deflection and we can keep twist, turning up the, the current until we can actually bring this right down to a spot. Now here I've run out of supply of about 33 volts and I can't take the supply up so I need to change to another. So I've changed the supply and I've changed it and do this one in increments so I'm going to change the voltage up to 40 volts and then I'll change the voltage up to 50 volts and we've now reduced it to a spot but we've still got our sine wave going in. Now an interesting thing here, if I change the voltage on the anode, the beam speed will change and we should be able to see the, the line return again as the voltage falls. So that's, well that's 3.3 kV, so we've increased the, the speed. And if I reduce it back down to about 1 point, it's 1.8 kV, and we're back to our dot at 1.5. If I go under that it changes again and though we're now down to a voltage where the, the beam is starting to fade. So there's a little explanation of what's actually trying to, we're trying to do here. This is the side view of, with our screen here and our solenoid coil around the outside and our electron gun at this end. The straight through path of the electron beam would give you the spot here but we're using the deflection plate with 50 Hz in order to scan this area. So it's giving you the path the beam would maybe take. Uh, but when it's influenced by this coil, it goes into a kind of spiral. So this is a spiral with this field from this coil. So rather than coming along here and making a spot here, it's forced to follow this pattern in here. So it's a little bit hard to explain on a, on a board here because this is a, a three-dimensional twist uh, that the beam is traveling through. So this is at this point, it's, it, the line has changed from vertical up and down to horizontal at this point and it's a full 360 degree twist to get it to this point where it's the first point where it is a brought back to a spot. So we find that quite interesting. Uh, I know it's quite complicated but um, just to show you the expression that derives at the end so the charge to mass ratio is just all you need to know is the uh, the voltage for the electron beam acceleration so that's the anode voltage the field generated in the coil which you can calculate with the current and the size of the coil and L the length for the from the point of deflection by the, the Y plates to being brought to a spot at the screen